everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be setting up my tiny little palette here with all of the watercolours that I bought from Jackson's that I showed you in my haul video. So I'm really excited to give these watercolours a go. I'm going to give you my first impressions and we will see how they turn out. So let's test these paints. These are the watercolour items that I bought from Jackson's and if you haven't seen my Jackson's haul video I will link that in the description box. But I've got half pans of of their own brand watercolours. They were a really good price, £2.50 per half pan. I'm going to set everything up in this little watercolour tin. I've had it for quite some time. I bought this little watercolour tin from Amazon. It's got this nice design on the front. I will link it in the description box if you're interested in buying yourself a little watercolour tin that you can put your own colours in. But it's just a really nice little compact size that you can add your own colours to. I'm going to get everything set up from my watercolours into my palette and get the colours where I would like them in the tin and then I'm going to swatch them. I really like how each of the colours are individually wrapped. I'm going to unwrap them all. So each of them are in a little half pan. They just then really easily slot into the tin like this. There's space for 12 colours like this within the tin. You can also have some in this area here. I'm going to place all of my blues um, together. And then we've got indigo blue. I love indigos and thalo blues. I just love those really deep hues of blue. I'm going to put my Payne's grey in near my blues as well. and my black on that side. I've got my black, my Payne's grey, and my indigo, and my thalo blue. I'm going to move my yellow across. I'm going to put in my French vermilion next to my yellow ochre. And I think I'm going to place my opera rose in there as well. And I'm also going to put in my violet deep hue. And then I have got my Viridian and my Thalo Green. So I've got all of my greens and blues and black. And then I've got my lighter colours here at the top. I think it's looking like a really nice little watercolour palette so far. I've got a couple of spaces left so I can do a little bit more shopping. Now first thoughts on my in here. Some of the watercolours seem like they're a lot more deep filled than others. Some of them like this one feel like they've not got as much watercolour and this one as say this opera rose here. So some of them do seem to have more watercolour in them in their half pan than others. Like this one here is really full whereas the yellow ochre is really quite empty. So that's my first initial thought on how they look in their half pans. I do like how they were all packaged in the foil and then the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swatch each of these colours into my sketchbook. So I'm going to get started with my lightest colours first. I'm going to start with my yellow ochre. Now I am using that quill paintbrush and it feels really nice so far. Just swooshing over the palette. such a light paintbrush, like it's not got a lot of weight to it at all. And then we've got that French Vermilion. It's very, very vibrant. Really, really nice colour though, really pretty. Oh, this paintbrush feels so nice, I like it a lot. Okay, now for the Opera Rose. Oh, it's so pigmented. So vibrant. I don't know if it picks it up as well on the screen, but that is so vibrant. I just got it everywhere as well. I caught it on my hand. Oh, but look how bright that is. That is incredible. This paintbrush holds a lot of pigment and it just brushes across really nicely. Probably got too much water on my paintbrush there. I'm just going to bleed in. Okay, so that's for the lighter colours. Now we're going to test out those darker colours. So we'll start with the greens and then we'll make our way to the black. Another really vibrant colour. 
colours of Iridium. Then we've got our Thalo Green. Okay, now for the Thalo Blue. Get a nice swatch of that going. Plenty of that pigment on my paintbrush. Some of these colours, they're so vibrant. Can't get over it. They don't feel chalky at all. Like they feel like they haven't got lots and lots of filler in them like some other brands might have. Now we have got the indigo. I love indigo blue. Like I love how rich and dark it is. It's just such a nice colour. Okay, now for the Payne's grey. And it just lifts up so nicely as well with the water on that. It just lifts that up so, so well. Oh, I love that tone. Like I love that sort of blue toned grey so deep and moody looks like it might granulate quite nicely as well that paint's grey and then last but not least i'm going to try out the black so i am really pleased with these colors so far i think my most used ones will be the paint's grey and the indigo i probably could have created an entire palette just with these sorts of tones in it because they are the colors that i go to all the time when i'm painting with watercolors but i'm i'm really impressed with the watercolors so far and how they have gone to the page how they picked up on the watercolor brush this is the watercolor brush that i'm using it's a jackson quill paintbrush and I have to say I'm really impressed with that also at the moment. I'm looking for some new paintbrushes and I'm enjoying this one at the moment. If you have any suggestions for paintbrushes let me know in the comments. I know some of you said about the Ravens paintbrushes on Jackson's website so I think I might buy some of those soon. So those are the swatches. Let me know in the comments what you think of the colours. My favourite is definitely, I'd have to say, the Payne's Grey. I also really like the Indigo. So if you watched my Jackson's haul video, you'll know that I bought the masking fluid and I also got the applicator together in a little set. It cost me something like £5.50. I think having a masking fluid is one of the most useful things you can have when working in watercolours. So I'm going to get this one set up. So this is a 60ml jar glass of masking fluid. Fluid. The masking fluid applicator holds 37 mil. This is where I get it everywhere, trying to put it into the applicator, of course. If you would like to get 10% off of your first order with Jackson's, then follow the link in the description box below. I'm going to work on this mini square of paper. This is the Two Rivers paper by Jackson's and this is the 630 GSM or the 300 pound. I think I'm going to paint a little galaxy on here um, and I'm going to use my Jackson's masking fluid to retain some of the bright highlights within the galaxy. So I just want to get in some shape of the galaxy sort of how it weighs in. The applicator is okay for kind of putting it down but it doesn't really help to smooth it out all that much so what I think I might need is a separate paintbrush. But just know that if you use a paintbrush you need to wash it really well because it is likely to stick. So I'm just going to use one of my older paintbrushes. This isn't obviously one of my new ones, um, but I'm just going to paint this in where I'd like it. So thinking about like that bright highlight where the center of that galaxy is going to be really bright, really colorful. And then I'm going to take a few of these for like, my little stars. So I'm going to let that dry. Probably take a little while for it to dry. So that masking fluid has now dried on my paper and I'm going to start my painting. I'm going to see what this studio synthetic paintbrush is like. It's Jackson's own one, but I think it will be pretty nice. So I'm going to um, create a little painting of galaxy. So where I've left those areas with the masking fluid, the paint won't be able to go through to the paper and it will remain really bright and really light. I am impressed with the paints. I really like them. I think that 
They offer really good value for money. I would recommend them, especially if you're wanting to put together your own little palette like I have, because that will allow you to just choose your colors carefully and then create your own little palette. And it's so fun to do, so I would highly recommend. So I have just received my Cass Arts order and I'm going to be unboxing that for my video next week. So if you're interested to see what I'm getting from Cass Arts, make sure you subscribe because I am genuinely so excited. Some of the items in there I have wanted for such a long time, but you're gonna have to wait until next week to find out what I've bought. So I've got just a wash across here then with that indigo blue. From there, I'm going to start adding in a few more colors. So I want to increase that blue around the edges. So by having the paper slightly wet, it just helps to glide these watercolors across. And they blend and bleed into each other really nicely. So I've got a few of my other colours in here. So I've got the Viridian green and I've also got my deep violet in there as well. So I'm going to add on to this side of my little painter. I'm going to turn it around just to make it easier to paint on. I'm not such a fan of the feeling of this paintbrush on this paper. It's kind of making my skin go funny. Like it's giving me goosebumps a little bit. No, I don't know if it's the feeling of the paintbrush over the top of this particular masking fluid, which I think it is. Just bear that in mind. If you find sort of like sensory things a bit difficult, then you might might find that this is um, not a masking fluid you're going to enjoy using. I've not had that before with my other masking fluids. It's kind of like sort of a squeaky feeling if that makes sense. I get the same with charcoal. Like I don't like the feeling of charcoal. These paints feel really nice and creamy. They don't feel like they've got any sort of filler, like chalky filler in them at all. When you swoop across to pick up the paint, it just feels really nice and creamy. So I think that is a really big plus for these paints. Right, so I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to peel the masking fluid off to see how my painting looks. Let's take off the masking fluid. My paint has dried. I'm just going to use my finger to get that masking fluid up. You can use a rubber or an eraser. Um, but I'm just using my finger. And then you can just peel it off this one peels off so much better than the other one that I had, which was just a, a pen. This one peels off so much easier, whereas the other one that I have is a lot more difficult to peel off. Now obviously I know this is a really stark bright white, but I have got some others on here I want to peel off. So lots of little bits. So it will take me quite a while, so bear with me. So I've peeled off all of the masking fluid and it's left these bright white sections of my painting. Now obviously I can go back in over the top and it will just provide me with a light area to work on. So it will still look a lot brighter and whiter than the other areas of my painting. That is the masking fluid. I'm quite impressed with the actual finish with that masking fluid. You get a nice bright white and it peeled off really, really easily. The only thing I didn't like about it was the actual feeling of painting over it. It made me feel a little bit uncomfortable. It gave me goosebumps. So just bear that in mind. If you don't like things like that, it could make you feel a bit goosebumpy. But overall, happy with the final result of that masking fluid. So I have to say, I think that the watercolors are so rich, so vibrant. They're really creamy to use. So I would highly recommend. I have enjoyed using the quill paintbrush especially. I've enjoyed the other two, but the quill paintbrush just felt really, really nice. The masking fluid, I didn't quite like the feeling of painting over that all that much. However, the result was good. So I just have to push through the actual feeling of it. But overall, I am really impressed with the Jackson's own brand 
and art materials. I would highly recommend them if you're on a budget and wanting to get some watercolours. If you have enjoyed today's video, give it a big thumbs up and also make sure you subscribe so you never miss out on any of my future videos. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.